Hello. Uh, this will be a continuation of the series on the Ten Commandments. This is the um, uh, from Emanuel Swedenborg's Spiritual Life. The Third Commandment. The Third Commandment is to keep the Sabbath holy. The Third and Fourth Commandments of the Decalogue contain things that must be done, namely that the Sabbath must be kept holy and that parents must be honoured. The other commandments contain things that are not to be done, namely that other gods must not be worshipped, that the name of God must not be profaned, that one must not steal, must not commit adultery, must not be a false witness, must not covet the goods of others. These two commandments are commandments to be done, because the sanctification of the rest of the commandments depends upon these. For the Sabbath signifies the union in the Lord of the of the divine itself and the divine human, also of his conjunction with heaven and the church, and thus the marriage of good and truth in the man who is being regenerated, this being the signification of the Sabbath. It was the chief representative of all things of worship in the Israelitish church, as is evident in Jeremiah and elsewhere. It was the chief representative of all, of all things of worship, because the first thing in all things of worship is the acknowledgement of the divine and the Lord's human. For without that acknowledgement, man can believe and do only from self, and to believe from self is to believe falsities, and to do from self is to do evils. As is also evident from the Lord's, Lord's words in John, to those asking, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus said, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom God hath sent. And in the same, he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same beareth much fruit, for apart from me ye can do nothing. That the Sabbath represented that union, and the holy acknowledgement of it, has been fully shown in the Arcana Celestia, namely that the Sabbath signified in the highest sense the union of the divine itself and the divine human in the Lord, in the internal sense the conjunction of the Lord's human with heaven and with the church, in general the conjunction of good and truth, thus the heavenly marriage. Therefore the rest on the Sabbath day signified the state, the rest on the Sabbath day signified the state of that union because the Lord then has rest. Also through that union there is peace and salvation in the heavens and on the earth. In a relative sense it signified the conjunction of man with the Lord, because man then has peace and salvation. The six days preceding the Sabbath signified the labors and combats that precede union and conjunction. The man who is being regenerated is in two states. The first when he is in truths, and by means of truths, is being led to good and into good, and the other when he is in good. When man is in the first state, he is in combats or temptations, but when he is in the second state, he is in the tranquility of peace. The former state is signified by the six days of labor that precede the Sabbath, and the later state is signified by the rest on the Sabbath day. The Lord also was in two states, the first when he was divine truth, and from it fought against the house and subjugated them, the other when he was made divine good by union with the very divine in himself. The former state was signified by the highest, in the highest sense by the six days of labor, and the later by the Sabbath. Because such things were represented by the Sabbath, it was the chief representative of worship, and the holiest of all. To do work on the Sabbath day signified to be led not by the Lord but by self, thus to be disjoined. The Sabbath day is not now representative, but is a day of instruction. And the end of that reading. That was all pretty <laughs> amazing stuff. Um, yeah, yeah, that's in the Arcana Celestia um, that Swedenborg's referring to, which is his large volume um, set of books that you can get on um, covering from Genesis to Exodus, um, all the verses we've explained in the spiritual sense. Um, it's really amazing. I'm, I've just started, I'm just working my way through it at the moment. But, um, uh, yeah, right at the start he explains the 
the six the seven days of creation and how that's um, each day represents sort of like a different step in the regenerative process which is like the um, the steps that that one goes through on that journey um, back to the divine to that conjunction um, like a divine union or like um, so there's all these steps and each one of those is a, is a different day going through and then that last day which is the day of rest is when um, that good and truth is, is married um, which is when we um, commune um, fully with the Lord um, but these things they're, they're, he also explains that they're quite rare um, as you go up but they could be more common these days um, depending how things have changed since his time but um, yeah it's like um, yeah that that final state is really um, is essentially enlightenment like and yeah so um, yeah so yeah that's what's signified by the Sabbath day keep the Sabbath day holy yeah okay thanks for listening God bless